Shalom, giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rachak, Radash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Peace and blessings to the elect. The topic of this video is going to be on uh, the name Lucifer. Because, you know, you have people out there who believe that the name Lucifer or the, uh, Lucifer is the name of Satan. That's not true. So, Lord's will in this video, uh, edify on the point that uh, Lucifer is not the name of Satan. And where that all starts with <clears throat> is in those uh, in the Christian churches. They have that doctrine or belief that there was war in heaven and, you know, Satan and God were best friends. And then Satan hated mankind and looked down on mankind. <clears throat> and then eventually, you know, he wanted to go to war with God and, you know, want to be like God. So then God kicked him out of heaven <clears throat> or used Michael to kick him out of heaven. And then that's his name went from uh, Lucifer to say uh to satan when he was cast into hell and all that and you know they have the whole thing he was the most beautiful uh angel to look on a more more beautiful enemy all that is just fairy tale stories it's not in the scriptures at all so <coughs> excuse me uh scripture that uh people uh use to say that uh lucifer is the name of uh Satan is this, Isaiah 14 and 12. It says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? Right, and this is where eventually the story somehow conjured up that Lucifer was, uh, like I said, up there in the heaven, or Satan was in the heavens with God. He wanted to be like the Most High. <clears throat> and then um, uh, the Heavenly Father used Michael to kick him into hell, and his name went from being Lucifer. He went from being the most beautiful angel to the most ugly angel. And that's how now he's in hell now. <clears throat> but when you get to understanding, that's why it's important to go into words and to understand the Hebrew. You know that Lucifer is not the name of Satan. And when you go into a blue letter and go into Lucifer, the Hebrew way for saying Lucifer is higher law, <clears throat> which means, <clears throat> excuse me, light bearer. It has nothing to do. Now, of course, you'll have these other definitions as shining one morning star, Lucifer. <clears throat> but Luc uh, Lucifer in Hebrew is higher law. You can even hear, hear it yourself. Strong's H, 1966. Hey, Okay, well, they say it differently, but it's higher law, <clears throat> which means light bearer, which means someone who is uh, who can see the truth. Someone who's illuminated, so to speak. It doesn't mean someone is not the name for Satan. <clears throat> Matter of fact, uh, from there, let's go into this now. Um, this is the Bible commentaries, right? Oh, God, it went and skipped. So, like, you bear me one second. <clears throat> now, when you go into the uh, Bible hub, you go into the commentaries. And you go into same precept, Isaiah 14 and 12. It says, Eliot's commentary for English readers. It says, is this the one I want? Yeah, this is the one. It says, how art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? <clears throat> the, word, uh, the word for Lucifer is literally the shining one, the planet Venus, the morning star, the sun of the dawn, as the symbol of the Babylonian power, which was so closely identif identified with astrology. Lucifer, etym etymology, God, sorry, can't say that word, etymologically, hopefully I said that right, <clears throat> gives the same meaning and is used by Latin poets, Tibul I-10, for Venus as an equivalent for the phosphorus of Greeks. That's how you, uh, how you say uh, light bearer in the Greek is phosphorus or U.S. Uh, US phorus. I believe that's how you pronounce the other way of saying it. It says the use of the word, however, in medieval Latin as a name of sin whose fall was supposed to be foreshadowed forth in this and the following verse makes its selection here singular, singularly unfortunate, <clears throat> meaning not true. Few English readers realize the fact that it it is the king of Babylon and not the devil who was addressed as Lucifer. And it says, while this has been in the history of the Latin word, it, its Greek and English equivalents have risen to a higher place. And the morning stars became the name of uh, Yahweh Shai. Right, because Yahweh Shai is uh, the bright and morning star. 
But it said uh, to go back. It says, um, few English readers realize the fact that it is the king of Babylon and not the devil. So right, when you read, uh, what you call it, um, go back to Isaiah the 14th chapter and you read it with um, understanding. Uh, let me see, where is it? Where should I start from? Right. When you read it, we'll understand that it's talking about <clears throat> a, a man and not Satan. Let's start at verse 4. It says, Isaiah chapter 14, verse 4. It says that thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon and say, How hath the oppressor ceased the golden city? And when you go, <clears throat> go, into, uh, go into different translations, the Heavenly Father is telling Isaiah to make a mock a mockery of the king of Babylon who at the uh, king of Babylon at the time was Nebuchadnezzar because when you go into Isaiah I mean Isaiah Daniel the fourth chapter Nebuchadnezzar uh, Nebuchadnezzar the second was getting really proud with himself and getting puffed up because he thought that he was the one who uh pretty much uh gave himself the kingdom and you know subjugated everybody underneath him and that's why when you read Daniel the fourth chapter the most I had to uh, humble him down and make give him the mind of a beast <coughs> Now it says, uh, the NLT for Isaiah 14 and 4, it says, You will taunt the king of Babylon. You will say, the mighty man, a man, not Satan, not some, because Satan is a spirit. <clears throat> it says, the mighty man has been destroyed. Yes, your insolence indeed. Let me see, was there another one? Yeah, that's about it. It says, you will taunt the king of Babylon. You will say, the, this, the mighty man has been destroyed. <laughs> So when you understand, read it with, uh, with the context, you understand that this is talking about man. Because when you go later, uh, later down the, uh, uh, go down in the um, chapter, where is it? Right, verse 16, it says, They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble and did shake kingdoms? So it's talking about an individual. It's not talking about... <laughs> Satan, Lucifer has is not the name of Satan. <clears throat> it just means light bearer, and really it goes back to uh, what the Greeks uh, what they called Venus, because um, when you look at the history about that, the Greeks would call um Venus Lucifer, which means uh, light bearer, because they could see uh, the planet Venus in the day. It would look like a, a morning star, pretty much. It would look like a star that's shining in the morning. That's why they called the Greeks called it morning star, or in the Greek uh, in the Greek how you would say. Uh, uh, Lucifer or uh, light bearer is um, or morning star would be a uh, phosphorus meaning because the planet Venus would look like a like a morning star because stars shine at the night but when you see this uh, planet shining in the distance <coughs> um, you see this planet shining it looks like a morning star it looks like a star that's in the morning that's why they called it uh, a morning star but it has nothing to do with Satan Lucifer is not the name of Satan and I got a couple more uh, precepts to uh, bring out. So when you read, go from four, uh, verse 4, it talks about the king of Babylon, who at the time was Nebuchadnezzar II. But this also applies to Esau in this time, because we're here in modern, uh, modern Babylon, right? So thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon, which are these elites today, and say how the oppressors cease the golden city. <clears throat> and when you go to verse 12, it says, how art thou fallen from heaven? And heaven doesn't always mean uh, talking about the spiritual like some people believe or these Christians believe. Heaven, it also means rulership. How are you fallen from your uh, um, from your high estate? What, what did Yahweh Shai say? He said, I see uh, seeing, uh, fall as lightning, meaning that uh, the, our adversary, Esau, Edom, is, his kingdom is falling down fast. That's why Revelation 12 and 12, rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe unto the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, for the devils come unto you having great wrath, because he knoweth that he has a short time. Why is he coming down upon you? Because you know his kingdom is short. He has a short time. So that's why he's going to come down with great wrath. That's why Yahweh Shai said, I see uh, Satan falling from lightning or from heaven. Doesn't mean that Satan was actually falling from uh, from heaven. It just means that he saw Esau's power, uh, Esau's kingdom falling fast, which is the kingdom we're in right now. <clears throat> And this is what's going to happen um, 
Well, actually, let's go through it. It says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which did this weaken the nations? And that's what Esau, Edom has done. But at the time when Isaiah, uh, because this is twofold, at the time this was written for Nebuchadnezzar II with the Babylonians, yes, because Nebuchadnezzar, uh, uh, the Babylonians led by Nebuchadnezzar, did weaken the nations all around them. But this also applies to Esau, Edom, because he's the one in charge now. He's the, uh, he's the, um, the uh, modern day Babylonians. It says, For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of the Heavenly Father, I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation. Right. And how has he said that uh, he will ascend into heaven? When he has his satellites and all that in the heavens right now, in the atmosphere. I will exalt my throne above the stars of the Heavenly Father, I will sit up also upon the mount of the congregation in the strides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yeah, uh, again, that goes into his satellites and all that. And now he's, uh, uh, if you I have a couple of books going on to their Star Wars program, they want to put to prevent the nukes from hitting America or just nuclear war in general. They're going to put certain satellites and laser technology up there in the heavens to prevent, you know, um, they have they call it the Star Wars program to prevent, um, you know, nukes from coming over. It's, uh St St strategic Defense Initiative, SDI, I think that's what it's called. Uh, to basically laser beams and things like that that will uh, destroy the nukes from coming over here. But that's not going to happen. It says, verse 15, Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. There's no such thing as hell. When we go into our word hell, I believe the word should be shot a wall, which means a grave. Right. right. The word there is Sha Wall. And when you see it now, these words are going off. It says underworld, there's no such thing. But it says the grave or the pit. That's where the uh let me see. No, that's it. Yeah. But it's uh it's the grave or the pit. It's not talking about an actual hell. There's nowhere in in the scriptures where you burn for an eternity. That's not scriptural. It says, verse 16, they that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, is this the man that made the earth to tremble and did shake kingdoms? And that's what uh, Nebuchadnezzar, uh, the king of Babylon, did long ago. And that's what Esau Edom did today. When he, a uh, 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 clear example is that it's Hiroshima and Nagasaki. That's how they um, brought nations underneath them with their uh, atomic bombs and things like that when they went to war with some of these other nations people when they see the technology that this white man has they're like we don't want to mess with him they see his military force they don't want to uh, deal with him so that's how he weakened the nations uh, but yeah that's uh, just going to bring out some other precepts and laws when this will be uh, edifying but just wanted to go into how um the word Lucifer is not talking about Satan. That's not Satan's name. Lucifer just means to be enlightened, to be a, to be illuminated. I'm gonna bring out uh, precepts on that and bring out a little bit more edification on that. So this is Hebrews 10 and 32. It says Hebrews 10 and 32, it says, But call to remembrance the former days in which after ye were illuminated, ye endured a great fight fight of afflictions. Right. Now, when you go into the uh, translation comparisons, it says, uh, I'll read uh, two of them. Now, I don't know what this one is. It says the NASB 20. I don't know what Bible translation that is, but it says, rem But remember the former days when after being enlightened, you endured a great a great conflict of sufferings, right? So it means to be enlightened, and we're going to get the definition <clears throat> for what uh, enlightened means. But what this precept is saying, when you read the NLT, it says, think back on those early days when you first learned about Yahweh Shai. So when you first, that's what it means to be illuminated, because they, they, they at least call themselves the Illuminati. But Illuminati just means to be enlightened, <laughs> That's why they call themselves the illuminated one. You know, like some people say, I can see, I, I can see the truth. 
right? Now, you can't actually see the truth, but what does it mean figuratively? It means that your mind has been opened, your, your spiritual uh, spiritual mind has been opened to where you can, uh, your mind has now been enlightened to see the truth. So now you see things for what they really are. It says, think back on those days, uh, read it again, think back on those early days when you first learned about Yahweh Shai. So when you first came as true and you learned that, uh, that you're an Israelite, you learned that Yahweh Shai, uh, the true name of the Lord and uh, the Heavenly Father and His Son, when you learned that the, uh, they're black men, when you learned about the angels, they're black, when you learned about how uh, things really are supposed to be, you learned that you're an Israelite and that you're in your kingdom, that what? That opens your mind, that illuminates you, that enlightens you. All right. Another precept to back that up. Is Baruch, I believe it's four. No, oh, it's already here. I already have set up. It says, uh, I'll start it too. It says, uh, Baruch chapter four, verse two. Turn thee, O Jacob, and take hold of it. Walk in the presence of the light thereof. Matter of fact, I'll start one. Baruch uh, four and one. This is the book of the commandments of the Heavenly Father. And the law that endureth forever. So those Christian churches that say the law is done away with. No. The law endureth forever. And the law that endureth forever. And they that keep it shall come to life. But such as leave it shall die. Turn thee, O Jacob, and take hold of it. What? The commandments. Walk in the presence of the light thereof. That thou mayest be illuminated. So this truth is what illuminates your mind. And teaches you how to live. So let's now go into what... um. Illuminated and enlightened means. All right. Let's go to the second definition. All right. It says help to clarify or explain. Right. And when you see the twelve tribes chart and you first come to this truth, you're like, "What's that? Uh, what's that chart all about?" I see it says so-called blacks are Judah, uh, West Indians is Benjamin. I see uh, who's Ephraim and all that. So what? And then when you ask these questions, what the uh, the reader, uh, the brothers out there, they read read you scriptures and they what they help to clarify or explain. And what do they do? They reveal, they shed light on, they clear up, they uh, enlighten. There's that word, enlighten. Um, what is this? Oh, there we go. It says edifying. Let's see what this. Okay. Let me see if there's anything on edifying. Let me see. Right. So to instruct. Right. Which edifying means to build. Build you up in the faith. Build you up in the truth. But uh, when you go to edify, it says to educate, instruct, teach. What? We're here to teach you the truth. Tutor, coach, train, guide. Right. Spiritual uh, guide. Uh, spiritual guides. Enlighten, see there again, enlighten. Now we're gonna have to get into our word enlighten. Um, cultivate, mm, cultivate your mind. Let's see what we could also get on uh, my bad. Let's see what we could also get on cultivate. Right, it says to grow, and that go that goes into the parable of um the uh uh the parable with the um the sower and uh. Matter of fact, where is it? Let me see if I uh, match you the 13th chapter where it says, um, matter of fact, hold on, let me get it real quick. All right, the parable of the sower and the seed. Just gonna go real quick to it. it. Says uh Matthew thirteen eighteen, hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. When any one heareth the word of the kingdom and understand not, then cometh the wicked one and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which receiveth seed by the wayside. Right, and I've seen that you'll have somebody come up and listen 
and then uh, they'll listen for like a little while and then they'll have some, I've seen it, whether they be their women or friends that, oh, don't listen to these guys. Come on, let's go. And that's the seed that fell by the wayside. They heard the kingdom. They heard that, yo, you're, you're, you're the son of God. You know, the Lord died for you. And they'll be like, yo, man, they don't know what they're talking about. Jesus loves everybody. His name's not Yahweh. His name is Jesus. Come on, let's go. These guys is crazy. That's the seed that fell by the uh, wayside. And then he says, but he that receiveth seed unto stony places is the same that heareth the word, and Anon with joy receiveth it. Yet he hath not root in himself, but dureth for a while when tribulation or persecution ariseth because of the word, by and by he is offended. Right, so that's the uh that's the one that uh fell by the wayside. But I didn't want to entirely get into that. But just want to uh explain that. So now let's get into this word um Enlighten. So lucky for making this video a little bit longer than it needs to be. But here, here's the word uh, definition for the word enlighten. It says to inform, notify, open someone's eyes. Now you're not actually opening the eyes. Will you open their spiritual eyes, their spiritual mind to what? To the truth. To shed light on right. We're here. The Lord has set us up to shed light on the fact that you are the children of Israel. And to shed light on the fact that Lucifer is not, does not have anything to do with Satan. That's not Satan's name. Satan's name is Satan, the adversary. That that's that's who he is. He's here to make our life hell while we're trying to serve the Lord. But that's a part of the, uh, you know, fighting the good fight of faith. So, that's that's pretty much it. Just pray that this video is edifying. I want to give all praise, honor, glory to Yahweh Ba Hashem Yahweh Shai. Ba Hashem Rachak Radash. Keep the good fight of faith. Shalom.